Ba, 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 ba. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, folks, uh, back again, uh, carrying on from coding for artists, uh, talking about programming uh, in slightly different ways, and gearing up from a whole load of drawing where I was taking pens and pencils and paper and drawing all kinds of things here, and mucking around with cutlery and crockery. And talking about barbecues and how we can work with computers, but treat them like your poor idiot cousin that you have to be very generous and gentle with, that understands nothing, that really, really needs to be talked to in very small, very clear pieces, with no assumption that there's any common sense at all. We've done a load of drawing, and today what I want to do is get to some coding. So I'm going to be coding really, really simple introduction to C++. We're going to do a couple of basics, look at integers, variables, vectors, uh, loops, conditional statements, some classes, building some of the simple things that we were drawing from all of our stacks of writing about what things were, about how we could define classes, about how we could make loops, how we could build up different kinds of programs. And I'm going to be doing some more drawing and I'm going to be doing simple bits of coding. And in just probably about 35 minutes in small pieces, we're going to get rid of all of this stuff and move on to using a toolkit for open framework so we can start mucking around with images and sound and sensors and loads and loads of really cool groovy stuff. So, uh, Without further ado, I am going to be using Visual Studio Code, which is a free editor you can download for Mac and Windows, and I think it's available for Linux, but you can use any plain text editor. So if there's something else that you like, Notepad++ or um, uh, Atom or a whole load of others, find one that you like. If you're diving into this for the first time, it might be worth starting with something a little bit simpler before moving to a big, what they call an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. It's like a text editor with 50 of your friends shouting advice at you all at the same time. And until you know which one you should be listening to when, it can be a bit overwhelming because there's loads and loads of things trying to help you, but they use really complicated language. So. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can download it from code.visualstudio.com and it's available free. And there's lots and lots of small add-on libraries to help you edit web pages, uh, edit Markdown to produce PDFs, uh, and in our, play, in our um, instance, edit C++. There's a whole uh, really easy step through about how to set this up for C++. It'll work straight out of the box, but you can download some extras, some add-ons, that will help with things like highlighting the code to show you this is a loop and this is a variable and so on, which the color coding really helps. In, in our code wise, it doesn't mean anything. It just is a help and a reminder that shows us where maybe bits are missing. And also it scans through and sort of knows the structure of code that we're writing and will give us hints to say, oh, I, I don't think this loop is complete or I don't think this line is complete. Did you mean to add this? So this kind of code help the color coding and a little bit of debugging does help us. The first thing that I'm going to do is do the classic hello world, which actually, if you've never programmed before, it's not a classic at all, but it's what you do. It's, it's the first program in lots and lots of different programming languages that people write where they get the program to do something. And the simplest thing that it can do is spit out some text back to you to say, hello world, sort of I'm alive. I've compiled my first program. So I'm going to come to Visual Studio Code and I'm going to make a new document and also move the cutlery and crockery for the moment. And I'm going to write that I want to include a library. And we talked about including libraries before. And this is just a standard library of things that C++ will do 
to do input and output. So I want to include a thing called IO stream, which just is a library for input and output stuff from this little kind of machine that we're going to compile or this little piece of program that we're going to write. And it means it can read things from the keyboard and it can output things into the console. So no complicated windows and colors and video stuff like that yet, but we're going to get there. The next thing that I want to do is tell uh, C++ that we're using what's called a namespace. I, when I ask for this command, often they'll have a much longer name, depending upon what library. And, and sometimes the way this is done is to say, oh, what happens if I'm using the IO stream, the input-output stream, and there's a command called Jeff, and it knows that it should output the name Jeff or something similar, and some other programmer, he or she, writes another library that also uses the word Jeff. How do I differentiate which command I mean? And so I can use a namespace. I can say namespace um, connect sensor command Jeff, namespace input output stream command Jeff. We're going to use the namespace called standard And I'm going to save this into my developer folder, and I've made a C++ art and code folder, and I'm going to call this hello.cpp. And what's great is now that um, Visual Studio Code or possibly whatever code editor you're using recognizes, because I've said CPP, which is C++, for this file, it goes, oh, okay, you're not writing a web page, you're not writing Java, you're not writing JavaScript, you're writing C++. And I know a little bit about that, about the rules. So it goes through and does this really cool code hinting for me. So you can see it's tidied up the include. It knows that this is fairly standard. And I'm just going to write the simplest program I possibly can. So I have to have one function which is called a main function, and it returns something. It returns an integer. So I write int, and what it does is it, it returns a one or a zero to say uh, whether the program has executed correctly or not. So I want this function, or this main function, to return an integer, and it's called main, and I don't pass it any parameters. So the brackets on the function that would receive parameters if I said, OK, uh, go and make sandwiches for X amount of people, it's not being passed anything as, a, as an argument or as a number of things to do or a parameter of things to do. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to put all the code that I need. So it's a function that's not being passed any information, but it's going to return an integer, which is a whole number which is just going to be whether the program is executed or not, or perhaps an error code. If we were to write that, and inside the curly brackets is all the stuff that I'm going to get it to do. And I'm going to use a command from the input-output stream called console output. So I've got a debugger console when I run this, and I'll be running it in the thing called the terminal, which is just like super text control. So instead of using the mouse and the keyboard and the screen and touch sensors or whatever, I just type commands in and the computer knows what to do. And I'm going to say I want to output something to the console. And the short for that is C out, console out. And I use two arrows to say what I want to send to the console. There's a converse one saying C in, console in, which means ask the user to type something in. And we have our arrows going in. Here we've got arrows going out to the output. So in quotes, I'm just going to say, normally at this point, it's super um, common. It's a trope. We say hello world. But I think we should just say hello moon instead. Just kind of for the heck of it. That is going to print out uh, hello moon into the text editor. But what I want it to do is just say hello moon and then end the line. And if I go slash n, 
that means the computer recognizes, oh, the slash means I'm going to do something that's a command, and n means new line. And at the end, I just finish with a semicolon, and that's it. So I'm going to save this now, and providing I haven't messed this up royally, and I'm doing this from memory, which is not a great thing to do in a live demo. I'm going to run this now, and it's going to say, hello, moon, start a new line. So I'm going to go to the terminal. Your version for Mac or Windows or Linux will be slightly different, but this is all on a Mac, and, and the commands are very, very similar. And I'm going to use some very, very basic terminal commands, and I'm going to type cd to change directory. And I've just started this up, so I'm in the root. I'm in the bottom of my hard drive. And I'm going to say cd for change directory to... And I know my developer folder is called developer and begins with a D, a, a capital D. So if I type capital D E V, and I could type the whole thing out, but if I hit tab now, if it recognizes the beginning of this, it'll fill the rest in like that, which is really cool. So I'm in the developer folder, and then I made a folder called art and code. Hit the tab again, and it fills the rest in. So that's cool. And if I hit return, I'll now change the directory that I'm looking at. And if I use the command ls for list, I can see there's my hello CPP. Now, to check that my machine is ready to compile, because I'm going to ask the compiler program to take this text file here that I've made, my hello world file, munge it into tiny bits and spit it out as an executable file. Now, it's not quite a double clickable application that's going to turn into Potato Shop or a game yet, but this is how we get there. I need to check that the compiler's installed. I checked it earlier on, but the simplest thing that I can do is say C++, and it would be expecting to be told, what am I going to do? And if it comes back and says, I don't understand that command at all, it means that you haven't got C++ compiler installed. So Google install C++ compiler, and the compilers are made by different companies and different organizations. You can download a couple of different ones that take standard C++ code, munge it all together, and spit out applications. I'm using the G++ compiler on um, OS 10 on a Macintosh, and for Windows and Linux there are different compilers, and they're really easy to install. I'm not going to go through all of that because there's a dozen different simple uh, tutorials about how to download the C++ compiler and make it run. And if it comes back here, what it's saying is my error, if I make this a little bigger, clang, C language, error. No input files, which means it recognizes the command C++. So the computer has got the compiler ready to compile my code. It's just saying, you didn't tell me which file to compile, which is really, really good. So I'm now going to use uh, the command G++, because it's a variation of a C++ compiler. G++, and then I tell it what file I want to compile. And I want to compile hello. And then I say, what file I want it to call the application that it compiles. So I use minus O as an argument to say this is the output. So the G++ uh, is like a function that's being passed some arguments. So it's saying, I'm ready to compile something. What file do you want me to compile? In this instance, hello, C++. And then it wants to know, and what do you want me to output that as? So minus O means the output. And then I give it the name of a file to make when it compiles all this code together. And I'm just going to say, make a file called hello. So we're saying use the G++ compiler, send it the hello C++ file, output it as hello. And if I hit return now, it executes that. And it's a tiny file. We're not linking hardly any library, so it's super quick. And now, if I have a look in my art and code folder, you can see there's my hello C++ file, and it's made this executable file. It's not all nicely shrink-wrapped with icons and stuff yet, but we can come to that. But it's an executable file that's been munged down into all the binary bits, machine code, that'll run super fast. 
It means if we need to, to edit anything, we don't edit this executable file, we edit the text file and recompile it, because this is why it's a compiled language and not an interpreted language. So the executable file I can run from the terminal, and if I go dot slash hello, which means this is an executable, run the stuff that's inside it, it just says hello moon. But now I've made my first proper executable file, uh, it's munged down into machine code, it's C++, and I've included a library, I've told it I'm using a namespace, which is uh, a prefix for a load of commands. I've made my first function, which every C++ program has to have, the main function. And I've used the console output to chuck some text out. It's phenomenally boring, but it's also an amazing achievement for your first program. And this is a real, proper, compiled application that you've built in C++, which is kind of hardcore industrial. But hopefully, after all of the drawing and everything else, you have got the idea of what we're doing with C++ and this really simple, simple introduction. On the next video, I'm going to go much further. We're going to go through the variables. We're going to make some loops. We're going to do some counting. We're going to do the vectors. And because we've got some of the basic uh, concepts and ideas that we drew out mucking around with cutlery and crockery, I'm going to run through this really quick so you see what does the code look like. And you can copy along if you'd like. There's loads of other tutorials uh, about doing basics in C++. But when I've covered these basics in uh, just a couple of videos' time, I want to move straight into open frameworks and we're going to start mucking around with images. We're going to build some experimental cameras. I want to do some 3D stuff. And there's some artwork that I have been dying to make for the last couple of weeks and I finally assembled the last of the pieces, some of which I found in skips around town. Uh, so I'm dumpster diving, pulling TVs and boxes and all kinds of visible stuff and loads of junk electronics that I've got a particular project that I've been trying to make since I was fortunate enough to go swimming at the beach in Japan two years ago. That's how long it's taken, so I'm really excited. We're going to build that next. Going to get on with a couple more things. If you like the videos, please do subscribe, like, leave some comments. We're moving somewhere kind of fast, and it's all about making art with machines. So I'll see you on the next video, and we'll be doing more in C++ and then starting to make some art. See you next time.